A piano player over here keeping us all and pointed in the right direction. Good to have you out this evening. Appreciate many of you made uh, a great uh, effort to encourage the Holloway family with phone calls and text. Many of you traveled all the way down to Hickson near Chattanooga and really reached out and were a blessing. Some of you able to come to the funeral. Uh, it's one of the most meaningful funerals I've ever been to. Mark did the service. He did an incredible job. And uh, really did a great job with the gospel, did a great job with connecting the family and the kids saying it was really a special time. Thank you for praying for them. Many of you have already reached out. I know we're, they don't want to necessarily do meals. I think the gift cards would be easier. So many of you already reached out. As a matter of fact, Miss um, Carrasco said, I was going to do like a week, but I've already got nine people. Should I tell them to stop? I said, no, no. If they're giving, if they want to be a blessing, uh, do it till we run out of people. Amen. So that's a blessing. All right, good to have you out this evening. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. And I'm trying to think of anything else I need to make you aware of. I do have something I'll make you aware of after the service and uh, in prayer meeting. Something important I believe we need to be praying about. And we're glad you're here. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Uh, before we get started, may I got a testimony? Right quick? All right, no quick testimony? All right. Oh, I, oh, I forgot to tell you, we have a special surprise next Wednesday. I'll tell you about it in a little while. Let's pray, all right? Father, we are thankful tonight to be in your house. we thankful that we can call upon you in our time of trouble. And you're a very present help. We're also thankful you, we can call upon you in our time of delight and know the reason we're having any delight at all in this world, living here on this earth, is because of you and your presence. So Lord, I ask you to speak to our hearts Tonight, sing, speak to us through these songs. Speak to us through the message. May your people be encouraged. Lord, may we go out into the world that is literally walking in darkness, don't even know it, the things they're stumbling, and be a light unto this world for Jesus' name's sake. Bless your people, we pray tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Find your hymn book 207. 207. While she's getting ready here, playing this, I uh, heard a man say one time that uh, goodness and mercy were like two uh, hound dogs he had. And he said he'd go out hunting, and he felt like goodness and mercy after he would uh, hunt. And he thought they're chasing him down all the time. And it's like God has been pursuing us to bless us our whole life. And sometimes we keep running the wrong way. But surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 207 as we sing. Come was I am.
Amen. You go ahead and be seated. I believe we're standing here today or sitting here now realizing that I believe really I feel like I've been living this life my whole life. Goodness and mercy I feel like has followed me all the days of my life. Anybody else feel that way? I'm telling you, if you're living here and you're saved and you know the Lord and you got a Bible, you live in America and you got a family and you got people in your life that encourage you to live for God, you really are experiencing God's goodness and His mercy. I, I, I mean, we take it for granted. Most of us live in such a bubble of a wonderful life, we don't really know the pain of the people that are living outside of Christ in the world. Really, I mean, we have our pain, we have our sorrows, we have our challenges, but to be honest with you, we are literally walking, I feel like, and experiencing God's goodness and mercy every single day. We hear on Wednesday night have prayer meeting after the service, and I hear, I read these prayer requests. I hear people's prayer requests of things they're facing, and I think, Lord, you know, I've been so blessed. I have never experienced many of the things that we're praying for people have been through. And um, maybe God's time may be down the road for me or for my family, but we're really blessed. So don't forget about it. Don't forget to give them thanks. A couple things. Don't forget this Friday is skate day. And then the 20th, Saturday, Little River Tubing. You can see Miss Kim. And I, uh, the church is going to help out on the, on the pricing. It's normally, I think... Um, Ten or eleven dollars for a child, and fifteen or sixteen for an adult. Uh, we're going to ask the church is going to absorb part of that. If if you can pay, I want to think we decided six for a child, and um, ten for an adult. If you want to go, and if you have a problem with the money, you let me know. We'll figure out a way. We want you to go if you want to go. Okay, we got plenty of work around here. Which brings me to another point. <clears throat> now. This is a little housekeeping, okay? <clears throat> How many of you have ever chewed gum before? How many of you know where gum is supposed to go when it comes out of your mouth? The trash can, right? Uh, well, some people have not been able to make it that far. We have found trash can, we have found gum on pews, we have found gum on hymn books. So I'm asking you to please put your gum in the trash, okay? Uh, just be mindful. Maybe it's one of your children. Don't be like one of my children. One day we walked out of church, and I'm not going to say who it was. Got out in the parking lot. I said, where'd you get that gum? They said, under the pew. There's lots of it. You want some? <laughs> I will not tell you which child that was. Well, maybe I will if I get pressed really hard. But I want you to be mindful. Don't stick it under the pew, Okay. Don't put it in on the hymn books. Uh, and uh, be careful. If you bring something in here for your child, that's fine. Make sure you clean up after yourself when you leave. Don't leave it for somebody else to clean up our messes, okay? I know that's a, a, a little unfitting because nobody's ever done it, but somehow it got there. Maybe people are coming in when we leave church, and they're sneaking in in here and putting gum on our hymn books. Let's watch out for that, okay? If you catch anybody on camera, we're going to prosecute them, all right? Oh, so anyway, if you'll be mindful of that, and, and that goes for anything. And uh, this is August. Uh, revival is coming up just around the corner. Brother Don Say will be with us Sunday morning, 11, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I encourage you, try to make every meeting. I know, well, that's a lot. We know we go to church on, we'll come on Wednesday. Wouldn't it be terrible? I talked about a few weeks ago, and I said I, uh, this message of being bent out of shape in the house of God. Actually, I said I thought of that. I didn't think of the title. I thought of the title that heard, I heard somebody else say. So I didn't, uh, that wasn't an original title. Somebody else came up with that title. But when I was thinking of the title, I began to look up the message, and that's why I started looking up that message. But you know what? Wouldn't it have been terrible for her to miss church on the night Jesus came to take away the burden of her life and set her free. Wouldn't you hate to miss it on Tuesday and have to wait five more years to hear the truth you needed to get set free in your marriage or in your personal life? So try to be here if you can. And then our picnic coming up October the 22nd. Um, we did it a couple of years ago. It's out in East Knoxville, and it's a large facility. And so, Lord willing, we'll let you know more details as we get closer. And then our outreach coming up Saturday the 27th at 9 o'clock. 
Um, there was something else I needed to mention. And my brain is forgetting it. So I don't know what it is. But maybe we can think of it in a minute. So in the meantime, why don't we stand to our feet and sing one more song. We're going to sing the first two verses of this song. Then we're going to take time fellowship just for a moment. And we're going to come back and sing the third verse. All right. 626. Let me get you there. 626. 626. I think you know this. and You recognize that tune? Jesus loves me. This I know. Here we go. time fellowship just for a moment she'll continue to play we'll come back and sing that last verse together in just a moment Make your way back. We're going to sing that last verse, 626. It says, Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. Here we go. Yeah. 
Amen. You go ahead and be seated. Good to have a Bible because if you didn't have a Bible, you wouldn't know Jesus loved you. I got two rings up here still. I got a diamond, looks like, with a heart on it. And I've got another one that's so little I can't see what it is, but it's a ring. If you lost your ring, come get it. If you're trying to get rid of your husband, I'm sorry. Put it back on. It's for life, okay? So we're going to help hold you to that because we love you. Amen. All right. A um, couple, uh, I need some workers here. I need Josh, Ezra, Liam, Nehemiah, Braden, and Haddon. While these young men are coming, I was reminded of the announcement that I forgot, and that is there is a special birthday fellowship in the fellowship hall tonight, tonight, so don't run off. We have somebody's birthday, but we don't know whose it is. We're going to celebrate. Does anybody know whose birthday we're celebrating back there? Oh, my goodness. She's sitting right here, and she's smiling, so we're going to have a birthday party for that afterwards, and oh, I know the other one I forgot to tell you about. This is the other one. Next Wednesday night, uh, we're, we're, we're happy people follow the Lord. Amen? We're sad when they leave. I, I'm sad. Brother Stallman's on the back back there. He's going to be leaving. And uh, they're moving to Alabama to work in a church down there. And um, Brother Stallman said, I just need one Sonny to preach to this crowd before I leave. No, he didn't really say that. But um, he's going to be preaching for us next Wednesday night. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. He's going to be here. You know what's amazing is I was trying to work out a time for him to, to first. And we're going to have fellowship following the service next Wednesday also. So you come on Wednesday night, you get a blessing. And uh, we're going to have a, a pizza fellowship following the service for the Stallman family going. That'll be next Wednesday. But I'd mentioned uh, Miss Stallman. Harold had worked 17 hours and he got here Sunday. He didn't come Sunday. And his wife was here, and I said, you know, I'd really like to do something special for your family. And uh, maybe I could have Brother Harold preach for us on Wednesday night. And she said, well, that would be nice. I said, well, I don't want to put a burden on him. If you've got to preach, you know, sometimes you feel the weight of all day having to preach. Because We need help on Wednesday. By the way, we need help on Wednesday. This is the other thing. We need help on Wednesday. Anybody that's free on Wednesday to help him pack the truck so he can be here in time to preach. So be there Wednesday. We're going to help him pack the truck on Wednesday. And I said, maybe, maybe that's too much. She said, yeah, that might be a little bit too much. I don't know. I'll ask him. So she got home, and, and um, from what I understand, I'm, if I tell this wrong, you can fix it, for, you can fix it Wednesday night, okay? Said, uh, sent me a text. Said, hey, uh, my wife said what you said at church about preaching Wednesday night. He said, you know, I, I've been having it on my heart. It be, really would be nice if I could preach the last service before I was here. And I said, isn't that amazing that God is always working on both sides. Amen? And I said, well, that's great. He says, well, you're preaching next Wednesday night. and Get ready. So we're going to help him get packed, get the truck full, and he's going to preach for us next Wednesday. We'll have a fellowship next Wednesday also for the Stallman family and do something special with them. All right, we're going to pray for this offering and turn these guys loose on you. Lord, we thank you that we can rejoice in your divine guidance. That we can sing those songs that the Lord Jesus led me all the way. And I thank you that you don't leave us alone to find our way through this life. But Lord, you intervene in every place. You're crying in the streets for wisdom for us to follow you. I thank you for Brother Harold and his family. If they want to just follow you and serve you, I pray you'd bless them. pray you'd encourage them. We pray for this offering tonight. You'd use it for your glory. And we just thank you for a chance to be a part of your family, the work you're doing on this wor in this world, on this earth, to reach people for Christ. And we thank you for these young men, those that are willing to serve you in any capacity of life. I pray you encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Well, amen. Thank you so much. We got a special, I think. Taylor, you're going to sing for us tonight? You're going to help your mom or she's going to help you? Amen. It's going to be good. I like it when you young people sing. Man, you know, if you look that verse up about I know I have the, what plans I have for you, it's in a time when Israel is being taken captive. Looks like everything is going to be really, really bad. But I don't care how bad it looks. He's got a plan. He's got a plan, and he will work his plan. You might not can see it today. They couldn't see it then. But I'm telling you, God's got a plan. And if you'll follow his plan and yield yourself to what his plan is instead of your plan, you'll end up having the greatest life you could have had in this world. If you don't, you can miss out on the greatest opportunity God would have for your life. 
Now take your Bible, turn with me to 2 Timothy. I think we'll be brief tonight and short verse. Hopefully a meaningful thought that will not ever leave us. But the Bible says in chapter number 4, 2 Timothy, Paul says, verse number 6, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. Finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And here's our verse, part of our verse, our text. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Our Father, we're looking forward to you coming back. I pray our hearts are filled with joy and excitement about your soon return and about your appearing. Lord, if there's those that are not ready for your appearing, I pray tonight you'd arrest their attention like never before, realizing time is sure running out in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Paul is telling us about what God has prepared for him. We looked at some of the different crowns, and Paul's probably going to get one of each of them. Amen? He's going to get the martyr's crown. He's going to get the leader's crown. He's going to get them all. And, uh, you know, he said, but, you know, Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. There's laid it for me a crown, but not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. You know, the appearance of Christ, the return of Christ, has different responses from different kinds of people. Just like there's a different response when you hear the sirens coming. If you're the victim, you're glad to hear him on the way. Heard a story about a guy, he was fighting this uh, criminal, was attacking him and trying to kill him. And he was wrestling this guy and trying to save his life and keep this guy from killing him and, and wondering what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, he heard the sirens coming. Oh, boy. <laughs> that policeman was real happy because he knew help is on the way. Now, that criminal, he wasn't so happy to hear them sirens coming because time was running out for him to get away. He said there's a different response. There's going to be two, at least two different responses when the Lord comes back. For them that love him, oh, my, that's us. The ones that are his children. We're going to be elated. We're going to be excited. Almost like, way greater, but for me as a little child, I remember we had a, a, a lady that babysat us or kept us, kind of a nanny, I guess. She would keep us, and she would, uh, it got toward 5 o'clock, and I knew my daddy was coming home, and I would sit at the driveway. I'm sitting out there, and I'm just waiting to see my daddy's car come around that corner. I was looking forward to daddy coming home. Ooh, I was excited about him coming home. Amen? A child, boy, one of the most exciting parts of the day when they hear Daddy coming down the road. And Mom, you can help that. He said, Daddy's almost home. Now, if I'd been in bad trouble, I wasn't looking so forward to Daddy coming home. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, there's a couple responses. Let's look at the response of those that love him. We should be elated. It's the highlight of our day when Daddy comes home. It's the highlight of our life when the Lord comes back to take us home. All those that love His appearing. You see, for those that love His appearing and love the Lord, it's the most wonderful day of your life. You know why? Troubles are over. All those things you're worried about, how are you going to do this? Let me tell you, troubles are over. Trials they're past. Afflictions, ailments, they're gone. Sin is finished. Satan can't get to you anymore. 
Temptation is over. Eternity holds all that we have longed for. If you love, it's appearing. If you're his child, I can't think. You think about what the Lord has done. You think about all the things that God has done to prepare a place for us, to all that he's done to make a way for us to come to him. Let me tell you what. When the Lord appears, sorrows, they're over. Goodbyes, they're past. Reuniting with those you love that you haven't seen, some that we've never met, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a glorious day. I don't know why we shouldn't love his appearing. You see, the Lord's presence will finally experience what it's like to be in his presence unhindered by this flesh. The one who died in our place, who's been our hope in our darkest hour of life. Who's been our strength when we felt we couldn't go on anymore. Who's been our friend when we felt totally all alone. We're going to actually be in his presence, uninhibited by the flesh. He's going to be our everything. We'll see him like he is and we'll know him like we're even known we'll see what he's prepared for us in heaven God's special design you know there's going to be some amazing things there there's going to be no sadness though no sorrow no goodbyes no conflict how many of you hate conflict Oh, there's going to be no conflict, no misunderstandings. You ever had a misunderstanding? You can't figure out how to fix it up? I'm going to tell you, there's going to be no misunderstandings. There's going to be no suffering, no pain, no division, no depression, no discouragement. Has ever knocked on your door? No disappointment. No departure from those that you love. It's going to be a place of absolute love, acceptance, and God's holiness. I'll give you four quick reasons why we should love his appearing. I've given you a few of them right there. But one is because of who he is. You know who he is? He is the eternal God. He is the creator of all that there is. John chapter 1 tells us in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made by Him. We're going to meet the Creator of this universe. And we're not just going to meet Him, we're going to be the close to Him as we can be to anybody in the whole world ever been. Closer to the eternal God. Not only who He is, but what He's done. John 1, 14 tells us that he became flesh and dwelt among us. This God who created the world, the universe, took on the form of a servant, became obedient unto death, according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, God has highly exalted him and given a name above every name that every knee is going to bow. You see, not only who he is, but what he's done. He came to us when we could not get to him what he has done what he's done is he's become the propitiation the satisfying requirement for God's justice on sin he has done that so we can be in God's presence unhindered by sin our sin is paid for it's all gone it's as far as the east from the west. It's buried in God's sea of forgetfulness. It's never coming back. I'm telling you, it's gone. And we could actually be in God's presence and be unafraid. We can be accepted. The Bible says we are accepted in the beloved. Between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, we're going to be just as close in union with that God has designed us to be from the beginning. Well, that's some good reason we all love his appearing. 
not only who he is, what he's done, but what he has prepared. Turn with me to John. We talked about it a couple times. We'll just turn to John 14. You can write down John 1, 1 and 2, and 14 earlier, and 3, and all the rest of it. But John says, he's talking to his disciples here in John chapter number um, 14. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go. I go to prepare a place for you. The third reason we ought to love is appearing. He's going, he's gone to prepare a place for us. Now you think about this for a minute. In six days he made the world. You can build a house around here, a physical house, in probably about 60 days. Some people have built them a lot quicker in about 60 days. You know what? He's been working on preparing us a place for 2,000 years. It must be some kind of place. Some kind of place. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Revelation chapter 21. I want you to look at the place he's preparing. Revelation chapter 21. I'll read a few things about this. Is talking about the new heaven in the new earth. The Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, the apostle John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Go down to verse number 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and, and at the twelve gates twelve angels. And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, and on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city. Verse number 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. The city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Gold was so pure as clear as glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, and the second sapphire, and the third chalcedony, and the fourth emerald, and the fifth sardonyx, and the sixth sardis, and the seventh chrysolite. The eighth barrel, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophorus, the eleventh, the jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. The gate was one pearl. I like to see the oyster that made that one. God didn't need an oyster to make it. 
But it was one pearl. Imagine a pearl as big as the gate. It goes on to say, and the street of the city was pure gold. And it were, as it were, transparent glass. See, why we should love his appearing, number one, for who he is. He's the eternal God. Number two, for what he's done. He became a man. He became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Number three, what he has prepared for us. You know, when we have an anniversary or something, I try to do something special, and I try to do something special. My wife pick a nice place to go to or somewhere to go stay, and I try to do a nice thing and get, have a fine dinner. But I'm going to tell you, that's nothing compared to what God has prepared for us. But not only what he prepared for us, but what he promised. Back in John chapter number 14, he tells us this. Not only he's going to prepare a place for us, verse 3 of chapter 14. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself that where I am, there you may be also. He prepared a place because he wants us to be where he is. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's the kind of love you can hardly get over. Why should we love his appearing? Because of who he is, what he's done, what he's prepared, and what he promised. It's a place of righteousness and holiness, a place of reuniting of loved ones gone before, unhindered by sin in the flesh, a place to know as we're even known. God said, Paul said, I'm going to get one of those crowns, but not only me, but all those that love his appearing. That's the crowd, I pray, that sits here. That says, you know what? I'm looking forward to the Lord's appearing. I'm going to love his return because I'm going to be delivered from all the troubles and trials and sorrows and heartbreak and all the things that are going on in this world. It says in the book of Revelation, we'll be crying, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. But most of us maybe not be there. We've got it pretty good in America. We're probably pretty, pretty good in our home. But there's another crowd, and I'll just quickly say this. There's another crowd that will not love his appearing. I don't want you to be in that crowd. God does not want you to be in that crowd. He said, I'm not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. You see, on that day, when the Lord appears, they're not going to love his appearing. As a matter of fact, they're going to mock that it even happened, but I got news for you. The truth is the truth. Turn with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, Jesus the most famous verse in the Bible and the most the gospel in a nutshell, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world. He didn't send his son to condemn you. No, but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this, listen, this is the condemnation. What is it? That light is come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. There's a crowd that is not going to love his appearing. Because they love darkness more than light. They're condemned because the light has come. And they've had opportunity to see the light. But they refuse to come to the light. There'll be people that sat in Baptist churches who were raised in homeschool families that called them independent Baptists that had a King James Bible on their desk that will wake up one day in hell because they love darkness more than they love light. They heard the light. They saw the light. They saw it lived out in real life. But they said, no, I don't want that. Those that have rejected Jesus Christ, they won't be happy on that day. They said, like they said, we'll not have this man rule over us. Oh, there's a crowd that won't be happy. They won't love his appearing that day. Those that waited too late to be saved. Those that said, I'm going to get saved when I get older. 
Oh, I'm going to get saved one day. I'm just not ready. Oh, when the Lord comes back, if it's before they get saved, be the saddest day of their life. The Lord has come, and they're going to find out that the proof is really true. Those who sealed their fate by rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. If they know their Bible at all, they only have a seven years of tribulation to look forward to. If they live through it. Because one third of the population is going to get destroyed by this. And one third of the seas are going to turn into blood. And all the things are going to happen. They are going to live in the worst time the earth has ever seen. You see, when that crowd finds out he's coming. And he's already come. And they don't love his appearing. They're going to realize I have only seven years at the max to live. Before I stand before almighty God. Before time is over. Those that waited too late. Those that don't want Christ to cramp their style in this life. Those that don't want to believe that it was Jesus Christ who gave himself and said, I am life. In me is life more abundantly. They will not love his appearing any more than the criminal loves the siren rolling up on the scene. All of a sudden, it'll be fear. It'll be reality that I'm facing judgment very soon. For his appearing will be the proof that all they've heard for years really is true after all. And they have made the wrong choice. They've decided, Jesus, he that saves his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake and the gospel shall surely find it. They'll find out that it's not a day of rejoicing, but a day of reckoning. You see, Paul said, there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me that the righteous judge will give me on that day. And for all those that love his appearing. The one crowd will be full of rejoicing. The other crowd will be full of regret. Not repentance, regret. Remorse, but not repentance. Remorse won't save you. Regret won't save you from that day. Only repentance toward God. Paul said to the, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to his appearing for me. For those that I know were saved, I'm looking forward to that day. When all the weight of sin will be gone. All the burdens of life will be lifted. I'm looking forward to that day. But I'm not looking forward to it for the people that I know are not saved. Because my heart breaks. Because when that happens, time, if they've heard the gospel and reject it, time for that person is over. The Bible says, Thessalonians, that God will send a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. And surely, if you don't believe you can believe a lie, look at the American people watching the media. They'll believe a lie in a minute. And you think they won't put a whole lot of stuff out there explaining where all the Christians went? You think there won't be some answer they can figure out and the world's going to bite hook, line, and sinker and they're going to bite? But I'm going to tell you what. I hope you're in the crowd that loves his appearing. We were the criminal. We weren't looking for God. We were running from him. But thank God he came and found us. Surely goodness and mercy found me. It made me a new creature in Christ. And ever since, I have loved his appearing. I'm loving the day he's coming back. All those who love his appearance are going to get one of those crowns. Stand to your feet, 160. 160, if you'll come play for us. Thought about this song, getting this message ready. When I was wrapping it up, I said, Lord, there's got to be a song that kind of wraps this up, makes us think about it. The invitation is this. Are the things that are keeping you from loving is appearing? 
Or the things you're trying to hold back on God on, hey, let them go. It's going to be before you know it. Will Jesus find us watching? When Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright. As we sing, the invitation is to come. Are you ready for the Lord's return? Here we go.